Hi, I'm Mark Buckingham, uh, artist of Miracle Man, Fables, Death, and many other books over the years. And you're listening to Eleven O'Clock Comics. <laughs> Like the sound of that. Oh no. English is not my first language. It's wrong, yeah. <laughs> Another one of these. Jesus, didn't we just do this yesterday? No. Oh, yeah. oh, Damn. But now we do it every day. Kind of chill. Yeah. Like, okay, like, bring it back to basics. <laughs> Three dudes chatting comics. Three hot guys on the mic. There we go. Yeah, I think that's an overestimation. Gotta have, gotta have love for yourself. I got enough of that. But I have more love for the listeners whom I'm talking to right now because this, everybody, is 11 O'Clock Comics, episode 944, and I'm Vince B. Dang, you are Vince B. Good looking, Vince B. And I'm David A. Price. Chibus. That's true. And of course, I am the greatest president in American history, Jeb Bartlett. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you're not Jeb Bartlett. You're Jason Wood, everybody, together again on a same old, same old episode. This is my favorite kind of episode, really, where we just chill, talk about comics at our leisure now that we've expanded the runtime. Yes. Oh, I shouldn't say I think expanded. the expansion, the return to the way, the, the return to the old was very much well received. Yeah, the return, not an we. I mean, yeah, we've always overstayed our welcome. Uh, but uh, we did try to trim it to an hour and change. And while that gave listeners twice the fun each week, it really was breaking up an episode into two chunks. So, yes. yeah, we've abandoned that and we've gone back to the, the, the good old extra long, hey, get out of my ears, you're annoying me, length episode. Sponsored by mm-hmm. CheapGraphicNovels.com. Cheap graphicnovels.com. Everything you need to know is right there in the name. They got your omnibus editions, your trade paperback collections, your manga, your OGNs, all that stuff at a fraction of what the noobs are playing down at the Amazon and other places. You go do your do your homework. Look up a book on Amazon and then jump on over to cheapgraphicnovels.com and search for it. I bet that it's at least 10 to 20% cheaper at cheapgraphicnovels.com because I've done it easily I've done it It, yeah and uh, I've noticed that the discounts on Amazon are not as robust as they used to be no they don't need to be anymore especially with publishers like Fanagraphics and Drawn and Quarterly you can't get those 30-40% discounts like you used to so um, you will get comparative discounts in in, in the zone at uh, CheapGraphicNovels.com. Just go there. And if you're a first-time customer, here's what you want to do. Order something mm, small-ish, right? You will receive an email confirmation from Mac saying, thank you for ordering from CheapGraphicNovels.com. Reply to that email and say, you know what? I would never, ever have known about this place if not for 11 o'clock comics, my buddies. And Max is going to give you free shipping on your next order. And that's when you rent the storage unit to put all the books you just bought. Do it. Cheapgraphicnovels.com. Yes. Yes. It's great stuff. I got a book uh, bu- 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 Friday, Thursday. A word? Yeah. Yep. Maybe I'll tell you about it at the end of the show. Oh, nice. Love it. How about that? Foreshadowing. Foreskin. And shadowing. sexual continuity. It's my favorite thing ever. It really is. It is. And where did I learn that? Zappa. Yes, indeed. You do pay attention to me. No, you're one of my best friends. Of course I'm I pay stunned. attention to you. I'm stunned. I'm st- I'm a little verklempt that you actually... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Can nobody pays attention See to that? me. See that? I mm. am drinking. Oh. Yes. I'm I'm d- drowning my workaday sorrows in the dogfish head, specifically mm. the 60-minute IPA. It is a very good drinking beer. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Once you start climbing up that ladder, when you get to the 90 minute, that's semi serious stuff. But when you get to the 120, you're going to need a ride home. Ooh. Yes. 
So I'm just relaxing with a bunch of 60 minute dogfish head IPAs. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm, re- I'm relaxing with a uh, fruit punch flavored G zero. Ah, oh, good thing you're sitting down. Is he, are it's you talking? You know, you gotta, it, I need something to get me over the hump. He's got yeah, to talk and everything. Get me over the hump. Mm-hmm. 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 Redeem us. Oh, dap my uh, it is, um, it is a, it is a really comfortable day outside, temperature wise. The sun was out. It was, it was, it was almost, it was almost fall like. It wasn't, it, it was barely due to my kind of day. weather. Oh, yep. beautiful. It, Same. It was, it was glorious. I'm giddy. So, um, because we got that little, not, not nip in the air, but because there's a bit of a chill, I don't need anything bogged down with a bunch of ice. So I'm just, uh, Enjoying a uh, a few fingers of Michter's unblended whiskey uh, with with a big old board cube. So I'm letting the cube melt a bit just to uh, open up mm-hmm. the whiskey. In this way, uh, it'll it'll be room temp soon enough. But yeah, that, that that's what I'm looking forward to. Can you see seven of nine running around the cube? Mm-hmm. I, w- I would no, but I, I can see Hugh. Oh, okay. I guess he's okay. I mean, he, he, he came back and, 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 and did something good. It's fine. Nice. I may have a surprise. Oh? Yeah. I finally saw Wolverine Deadpool. Or Deadpool. Wolverine. Yes. What's the official name of it? Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool yes, and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine. Finally. He's Deadpool's third movie. He's, right. Wolverine's the tag along. Yeah. Imagine that. Um <laughs> Full disclosure, I I waited um, for a Tuesday because tickets are only like six bucks. Mm-hmm. My I, my one question was anything spoiled for you? No, none of it. You know me, I don't. Oh, nice. It. No, oh, no. I mean, I know you, you wouldn't have cared, but I don't know if anybody just would have offhandedly had said, or oh. or if you would have caught a meme or seen something on TV. No, I think would, I would because have cared. I noticed the. You no, I know you of all people wouldn't. I because I know that. Uh, I mean, the cat's pretty much out of the bag. It's been out for a couple of weeks now. I'm, I'm starting to see TV spots where they're actually showing um, the Chris Evans character. So it's 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 That's like, I'm true, not yeah. going to spoil it. But it, it, so I mean, things are kind of being out in the open now. Yeah, uh, but no, because uh, you know I have a ravenous appetite for YouTube, and I do occasionally mm-hmm. watch the trailer compilations, but whenever the trailer that wasn't just um i mean the initial trailer and then i think the follow up trailer were just uh reynolds and jackman they were just walking around and he had the dog in his yeah. hand and it was the liefeld feet thing behind mm-hmm. them and, or or it showed a little bit of the the limbo with the the 20th century fox thing buried in there. like i saw that but i yeah. i was i did not know I was not aware of any of the cameos, nice. not not any. And awesome. I was like, "Holy shit, this is amazing!" And yeah. um, I got a. I think the MVP was uh, Channing Tatum. Right. Well, <laughs> certainly, certainly, yeah. I mean, one, one of the one of the highlights of the film for sure. Fucking ridiculous! It was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, so over the top. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the funny uh, thing is, the costume looks even more ridiculous. In yeah, real it's, life, not, it, it's, it's, it's not. not a, it's not a costume that works outside of comics. It's, no, it's so stupid. I, does it work in the comics too? I don't no, know. no, barely. No. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. No, also, I, Channing's a bit stockier. He's a bit thicker than than our right. comic Cajun. But still, that's true. It, I, it was still a great thing to see. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, I, I don't want to. For you, I'm glad. No, I don't want to indulge in the what do you call it recency bias because mm, I, sure. I just saw it yesterday, but. I think if I had to stack it up as we do as, you know, comic people, well, how does it relate to all the other movies? The only movie that comes close to it is is uh, Guardians 3. Nice. Yeah. Wow, 3. Okay. Well, I, I mean, like I one in that. I I 1 and 3. 3 is yeah, 1 1 is fantastic, is yeah. it, but but 3 3 is Renee's one and done with that. She's never going to watch it again, and I understand why. And I, is I, it cruelty I, to animals? Yeah, um, they're, they're not real animals. It doesn't, bro. It doesn't matter. You see their eyes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, 
So I totally get it, and that's fine. I and there, I have a couple of friends that 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 are like that, and that's cool. I, I totally get it. Um, I haven't been in a rush to see it again myself, although I I, I really want to. But uh, did you see? You saw the other two Deadpool's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm well, I'm, I, cause, cause, I'm not crazy about. I mean, I'm I'm with Jason where I thought the first one was entertaining, but but this one knocks them both out of the water. Oh, yeah, no, like the oh, second yeah. one for the most part, but no, the, the 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 third one's the best of them. I three. think it is oh, an yeah. ascending scale. I thought the first one was good. I thought that you know I'm, I'm a cable mark, so yeah, the second one th- thrilled me more than the first. But mm-hmm. um, this one, yeah, just because I think. Um, Reynolds mirrors my opinions on a lot of things. Or I should say the the character of Deadpool, whatever he said in in relation to the Marvel movies and comics yeah. and the multiverse, like I'm with him on all of that. I think the last yeah. six to eight Marvel movies have been shit. I think I think it was definitely a downturn spiral after Endgame. Um, I, I'm done with the multiverse. I just don't want to see the multiverse anymore. I think it's overused. It's an easy way to just do your cookie cutter characters, right? And which this film indulges in that, right? But in a way, it's like, oh, fuck. It's all these Deadpools. Like, it's so stupid that it's, 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 it was a scene where they could just crank up the effects and just, and, and the blood flow. And so I, I understood it. But yeah, I'm just tired of all of the tropes that we've had to swallow the past like six to eight Marvel movies. And I think it, it was a nice, refreshing, unpretentious, wink, wink, feel good comic book movie. That's all. I mean, who doesn't want it? And I'll tell you, when Jackman put the cowl on, I was like, I'm done. I'm this. Yeah. I'm, I'm finished. Oh, yeah. This is it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I just thought it was wonderful. And the the age of apocalypse blink the patch the um the weapon x, yeah. The, yeah, yeah the weapon x the the uh, sylvester sylvester on the cross Fucking and they, brown and tan and bro. they mentioned brown and tan saying he, he's like you're the john Byrne version yes yeah i thought it was great <laughs> i mean th- yeah. they did pick the best or uh, a a reasonable approximation of the best wolverine costume right i know you don't agree with me but the blue and yellow is my favorite Right, and I, and I thought yeah, you're he, wrong about that, but that's okay. No, I um, thought he yeah, no, he wore it really well. Favorites. He did. I mean, did. The, Henry Cavill as one of them was great. Oh God, yeah. The the the, the actual yeah. five foot version was hilarious. That was you know, perfect. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, good. there was so many. That's the thing. It was just nonstop, surprisingly joyful tidbits. Whether it be from the making fun of of, I was really really pleasantly surprised at how uh, Disney allowed them to be so. Um, critical of of disney right like that's because right. disney takes themselves pretty seriously and i actually listened to a podcast uh a few weeks ago with Assad ayaz and he is the chief brand officer of disney and uh he's in charge of like all of their marketing and he talked a lot about that that it was definitely a decision they had to come to you know to allow them to do what they did and uh i yeah i just i just think it was such a smart movie in all ways and, and just take taking all of the the now abandoned Fox properties and kind of giving them one last hurrah just makes a ton of sense. And the actors they got to come back for those roles is just amazing. It's just, the whole thing was a blast. And even like there were jokes within jokes, right? Like Electra is, you know, looking all like she's looking and then they, they make a, you know, a a Ben Affleck joke. It's like, it's just funny, right? Like, like, and again, like you could watch that movie and have no idea, like that wouldn't even made a mark. But if you, if you have some passive knowledge of the fact that she's got, you know her kids with Ben Affleck, and they were together for fifteen years. It's fun. It's even so you're like, oh, that's so funny. Like, yeah, I just, just like, thought the whole thing was like so so self 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 uh, informed. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was neat because they're like, oh, Daredevil's dead. She's like, meh. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Do we need? Do we need a moment? That's fine. To your point, <laughs> though, the only I went with the entire family minus my wife. So the only other person that had even the slightest inkling of what was going on was Mia. Vinny doesn't know. Nina has no idea. But but they were they were enjoying it. Like uh, mm-hmm. the, there was a, a good amount of of jokes and and commentary that would appeal to people that didn't read comic books. 
And that's what sure. I thought. Yeah, I just think it's it's a wonderful movie. And, and yeah. um, Disney's not squeaky clean, dude. Because I've seen the slate of things they have upcoming. They're on. They're another uh, studio on a treadmill. Like we're doing Snow White live action. Wonderful. Oh yeah. We're sure. doing yeah. fucking yeah. Muf- Mufasa. Yeah. Yeah. Like come on. Yep. Come up with something new. It's sure. not that hard. Just pay creative, talented people yeah. to to come up with something for you. Well, like you said too, it is. I mean, I'm aware of the recency bias, so I'll, I'll give it some time. But I, I do very much. I said coming out of the movie, it was one of my favorite superhero movies ever, and two weeks later, I, I still think that now. Oh yeah. Um, so I, you know, I don't know where I'd rank it if I were going to do some kind of ranking, but it's it's certainly up there. I mean, it's it's it. it, it I, I can't imagine it wouldn't be in my top five or ten if I were to sit here and write them all down. Just to be that close to Monica, just stop. Like. To to actually or Morena, sorry to Marina, to, yeah. to sit to sit oh, yeah. ne- to sit next to her. It's like yeah. holy crap, I can smell your hair. That's a little creepy. She's just oh, yeah. so I'm delightful. sorry. She is. So she is beautiful. She really is. She yeah. yeah. No, I mean I, I, the film looked great, and I, I like the f- the fact that they didn't try and um, upscale Colossus. Like Colossus looked janky, but I, I think it works. Oh, the, yeah. 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 Yeah, and even like even there were even fun stuff that were Easter eggs that weren't even known until after the fact. Like Blake Lively was Lady Deadpool. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, I mean, and you, didn't, you didn't know that in the movie. I mean, cause obviously she's, no, fake. She's, yeah. But then afterwards I'm like, Oh, Blake, I saw an interview and it's like, Oh yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to, to do the park. Cause Ryan asked me, and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. Like his wife, Blake Lady Deadpool. Yeah. It's yeah, 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 and, 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 super fun. The, yeah. um, uh, it was, uh, crap. Um, did you see Logan, Vince? The last Wolverine yeah. movie? Yeah, yeah, I did. Because I thought that, uh, and and I think even the the director of of Logan thought that, because um, I, I think some people were were trying to figure out whether or not he'd be offended over uh, the intro, the the opening scene of of Deadpool and Wolverine. He's like, no, it was great. It's like they they it was respectful. He's like, I had no problem with that. It's like it it it, it is what it is. But like, there's no. But I thought the whole. The whole opening was was just magical, and yeah, and I mean, it, it's up there with with Guardians too, as far as an opening. Yeah. Oh, totally. there's not a better opening than Guardians two. This I, was close. The, the, yeah, it was close, but uh, Mister Blue Sky, stop. There's, there's yeah, no, I know. yeah, no, that's, that's, that's great. It's a classic. Yeah, it's a classic. Um, I, wow, yeah. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. No, nice. well, I thought it was it, great. Yeah. It was great, but yes. but, oh, um, but using. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine as a springboard, there was another Wolverine thing that came out today. Yeah, there is definitely a thing. It's yeah, a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. It's it's, 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 it's written oh, by yes. Yeah, written by Jonathan Hickman. <laughs> illustrated by Poppy Capullo. With with color art by Tim Townsend. It's Wolverine Revenge number one. I'm surprised that uh Townsend inked him on this instead of uh, Glapion or, or even Wait, uh, Danny Meek. Did I say but color yeah, art it, by it, Townsend? You did say color. Yeah, you meant, you meant I, we we, we, we know what you meant. We knew what you meant. Yeah, sorry. Uh, a little bit stupid. But he, he does. Um, it's it's a weird book. It, I, I mean, I, it, look, it looks, I'll just, because I don't. This is a book that we were all looking forward to, you because you love the Poppy Capullo. I love Greg and, Capullo. And, and, and I thought, oh, Hickman and Capullo, what a, what a, I mean, it doesn't get any more powerhouse than that. And this book has been hyped. I mean, they announced this, what, last, last San Diego? Yeah. Right? So over, yeah. because they had the, the preview images and Capullo had been working on it for, what, a year and a half, two years. And I thought, well, damn, like, this is going to be epic. And, um, I, I mean, I thought did, the first did, issue was just terrible. I, I just Did I, we I know Marvel like was doing a black label line? Like, I didn't know. Like, I'm well, just, I, I, yeah, it's I definitely, not in continuity, if that bothers no, you. It's not any continuity right, at all. Because, yeah, no. um, I mean, we've always, be, like, that'd be that's fun. what we right. say. I mean, no, it yeah. can still be an entertaining story. That, like, you don't have to, whatever happens in the, within mm-hmm. these, between the covers is fine. It can still tell a story. I don't need it to be within continuity but it's or, just or, or to really make sense. weird because, but yes. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, but th- let's just set it up for them. Um, Asteroid M goes kablooey. And unleashes a gigantic EMP, which basically sets most of the planet back to the Stone Age. 
because uh, computers, vehicles, power plants, uh, any kind of electronics, all computer data, all, all of the infrastructure uh, on which we depend is now gone. And, and Wolverine doesn't know this because he's tooling around, uh, taking a vacation in the Savage Land, <laughs> which is nice. I mean, to, just to see Capullo draw dinosaurs, I'm, I'm okay. That's phenomenal. Great. Uh, and and Nick Fury comes to original just, Nick Fury. The, that's the what OG I don't understand. Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. It's <laughs> it's white Nick Fury. Yes. And, and he and he tells Logan, you know, most of Canada's fucked up. It's pretty much gone. So uh, we need your help. And so he's assembled um, what was left of the Shield helicarrier fleet, which now amounts to three. Right. And, and yeah. you have uh, a group of 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 uh, heroes that uh, need to secure uh, a power source because, as Fury says, you got to put the lights back on. And unfortunately, this power source is is controlled by the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, led by Mastermind. So the heroes are Captain America, Bucky, uh, uh, Clay Quartermain, Dum Dum. Who else? Maria Hill, and and who else? Uh, Nick Fury, uh, like, that, and Wolverine. Yeah. It's a Fury, Hulk. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, by the way, Dum Dum needs the Ozempic because I've never seen Dum Dum that fat. But Ozempic's fat. But anyway, uh, so so here's the thing that got me. They 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 go to secure this this cold fusion reactor, whatever the hell it is, and and Mastermind um, overtakes Clay Quartermain. And causes him to pilot a helicarrier into another hel- helicarrier. And they all go kablooey, but not before our heroes can jump out of one of the helicarriers. Just our heroes. But see, <laughs> I don't know. How, in what reality, would Captain America be smiling knowing that all of these people he knew seconds ago are now dead he's he's par- not parachuting but he's jumping heading towards the ground shield uh, 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 like strapped to his chest and he's smiling what well, i don't understand it how does that how how does that work did you guys not find that weird like well, look, there he's, was a lot I of stuff I found weird about that. I mean, book. yeah, the, he's got the, a little when, smile when, on his face. Like uh, he does. I mean, yeah, it it is. He's 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 just kind of. You see, yeah, okay, but uh, you would think yeah, that he I, would be it, hurtling towards the, the the ground with like this expression of horror. Nick Fury, a man who he's known for ever, just went kablooey. And all well, these... you see the way faces look when people skydive. I don't think that would look good, and uh, that wouldn't look cool. Nobody's cap in a comic. Control that, but even yeah. when they touch down on the surface, <laughs> and they, they touch down on but the that's surface, the, that's, my, that's my favorite part. He fucking turns into Sparky Griswold and uses the shield to uh, to, 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 yeah, to, I know. to sled down the. <laughs> but there's a group shot moments after their parachutes flop yeah. down, and Cap has a little grin. And he's not like, oh, well, let's take a moment to 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 remember our fallen comrades. No, it's like we got to do this. Let's go do this. Let's yay! And he's all happy. Maybe he thinks it's a vacation. I. It's just so strange that. So but so. It's, but it, it, it's, I mean, it doesn't stop there because they. So we're supposed to believe that the helicopter, the helicarrier, one took down the other. Okay, fine, whatever. Heroes escape, okay, fine, whatever, they're heroes, they found the escape. They land on a mountaintop or some kind of snow-covered field near the base, but they're far away from the base. They establish that, they're like, how far to the base, and they show you a distance shot. It's like a long-ass hike through the snow. Okay, whatever, fine. As they're hiking, we're supposed to believe that not one, not two, but three of Wolverine's nemeses are hiding in the snow like ninjas waiting for them to walk by them. Yes. Why on earth would these three beings, especially given their power, be hanging under the snow for what could have been hours and know exactly where these guys were going to land from a blown up ship miles and miles away from their base? The only thing, right, right. But the only thing I could think of, and I had that same question, 
why would Deadpool, Sabretooth, and Omega Red be deployed if they didn't know that Wolverine was going to be there? Because they had, I mean, the Brotherhood had no idea that that S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to launch this offensive, right? Just go in and just take this thing. Um, the only thing that I could think of is Mastermind. That maybe he was eavesdropping. I mean, if he can control Clay mm. Quartermain from um, however yeah. distance away from it, a S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, he would be able to just be like a, a an Alexa and just listen in. On, right. on, on their conversations, that's the saving grace of this thing. Because when you really it weird that 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 they, they I, now listen, I know Deadpool and Wolverine have had some fights. Like I get that, but isn't it weird, given our just a few minutes ago conversation? Yes, that they decide to put this out right now when Deadpool and Wolverine is literally and, the best and you've got selling art yes. movie of all yeah. time, and their yeah. buddies and yes. Deadpool, so Deadpool World War Three comic, right? Yeah, it's but really Deadpool's weird. drastically out of character in this. He totally, he, yeah, he totally. quips, but it's it's not. I don't. I, it's Deadpool only in, in visually. Yeah. I think. Yeah, he's but, very he's, he's very um, but uh, bloodthirsty. Not I, ever, I got issues though. I I, I okay. I'll, I'll you know uh, Maria getting taken out by by Omega Red or by uh, Sabretooth. I can yeah, believe these, these Shield isn't sending their best. No, with, I can with, believe with that, one. but. But uh, and Maria I, I their best. She's pretty much the leader of Shield behind Nick Fury. I mean, yeah, I can even believe Sabretooth taking out Bucky, but I do not for a second believe that Omega Red could take out Captain America. I just, I, I don't see it. Yeah, it, it's like he's to- just like out of nowhere, just like he got got. Like he yeah, but he's like, totally you know. unaware. He's like, okay, I yeah. just slid down the, the the hill in my little shield, and oh yeah, and he's he's like almost. His thoughts are f- removed from the current situation, and it's like that's not Cap. Cap's a tactician. I have he would a got the lay of the land. Theory. Yeah, and it's it's not true, but it's a tinfoil hat theory. I think Hickman is 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 fucking Marvel from the inside because he's pissed about <laughs> about the Waker call. Well, that, that you know that because, would seriously explain a lot of this because we've got GODS, we've got. Ultimate Invasion slash Ultimates, and we've got this. Now, again, apologies to any listeners who are enjoying any of those. I don't want to harsh your groove. If you're enjoying them, great. But you, I think you all know that I am a unapologetic and bona fide Hickman acolyte. I think he's one of the best of his generation, and I've loved almost everything he's done in his career. And I think he's on a three-idea losing streak. Like, yeah. I think none of those books are at all what I have come to expect of him from a... Right. But I mean, it doesn't end there. Um, no, well, wait, but I, I don't, I, I don't believe that was Maria Hill who landed with them because she was in one of the other helicarriers. Okay, the hair well, is also different during the roll call, but still, I mean, which, which is why I'm not. Right. Yes, obviously, they're shielded. Well, she was a red they, shirt. They, they, You're saying a red shirt yes. that looks like Maria. Okay, well, that's just bad. That yeah. they should have specified that. They should have done something Maria else Hill as yes. well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why I see, I would no, see. I think it would be Maria Hill because the whole point here is they they ended up killing everybody. They killed Cap and Bucky too. So they I would, still why no, but but they they but Maria and so the ship that Fury was on that he tells the heroes to jump because he tells them he says Cap, Bucky, Wolverine, and a strike team are going to be in one helicarrier, the one he the one Fury is piloting oh, right. or commanding, yeah. and then uh, dum dum. Dum Dum, Quartermain, and and Maria are going to be in the other. So it, it's so if okay. you go into a project Fair with enough. two characters from the same organization wearing the same costume, and they both are close cropped hair brunettes. Yeah, that's Uncle Pool. That's just yeah. bad. That's bad, Greg. Yep. That's just yes. it, it, You can't follow it. It's, mm-hmm. it's so. Um, the, again, they they another strange twist of events. The mastermind implants bombs into the chests of Cap, Bucky, and Wolverine. And he goes through this long, uh, dreadfully painful uh, soliloquy on how they had to do it because Wolverine's healing factor prevented them. And they had to put the bomb behind the rib. Like, okay. And, and Peter Rasputin's there. 
and he's on the side of the brotherhood and he's just like oh yeah. Uh, this this will teach you Western imperialists to come and try and take something that doesn't belong to you. And it's like n- that's so out of character for Peter. I mean, Peter's not completely squeaky clean, but here's a guy, Cannibal yeah. Special, that he has spent the majority of his adult life with, and he's just sitting back while Mastermind implants a bomb into his chest. Makes yeah. no and sense. Then, and then and then they and then they they kill him. Then they then they blow up the bombs, and it's yeah, like so okay, you, wait a minute. You I went through all the trouble of luring them here. Knocking them out, bringing them back to the base, because again, like they were ambushed by, as we talked right. about, the, the trio. They were ambushed, successfully ambushed. They, they, they got them. You didn't kill them there. You brought them back to the base. Then you bring them back to the base under some kind of sedative. You, have, you, you do surgery on all of them to put, now mind you, the other two are, are human or human-esque, right? They're, I mean, they have super soldiers here, but they're, you, you somehow manage to put these bombs in their chests. They heal. The, the chest things heal. And then, like an hour later, you blow them up like i don't understand like, what the whole point why did, of putting what was the bomb the, yeah why why not why do you just kill them like what was the i yeah, don't like, if you had their chest open on an operating table just just, just like, take their hearts out kill them it doesn't that, make me like it, it, it makes even less sense that deadpool has a remote control with a star and a wolverine button and a bucky button on the remote like they didn't even know that these characters were going to be uh, again the mastermind angle Maybe they, maybe mastermind told, but can you imagine being the lead of a criminal organization that's trying to defend this, this last power source on the planet and you waste time making a specially designed remote control? Even that if you like told, it's silly. Even if you told your minions to, yeah. There's the Netflix button. There's it's, the Hulu it's, button. It's so <laughs> weird. And, and I, I'm, you know, I'm a Capullo Mark, but I think half this issue looks really good and half of it looks very rushed. Completely agree. And again, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to throw shade. The guys can can draw far better than I ever could, a hundred times better than I ever could. But but I I guess because of the hype and because this was Capullo coming back to Marvel and because Capullo hasn't done interiors in years and because he seemed excited by it, I guess I just really thought that no matter what I thought of the story, that it was going to be a visual jaw dropper that I was going to pour over each page and say, "God damn, it's great seeing Capullo draw these characters." And I just I'm with you, Vince. I didn't. I didn't come away with it. I thought, no. okay. I mean, and maybe it's maybe it's him and Townsend. I don't know how often does Townsend often ink him. I don't think he does, right? So, no. um, I, I don't think it's, it's just, in the inks. I think it's definitely. I mean, yeah, a lot of the I, panel I, layouts are just plain lazy. I guess I just, if you gave me this book with no credits, and and said, hey, who wrote it and who drew it? There's just I would have given you a fifty artists and fifty writers before I came up with Jonathan Nickman and. And Greg Capullo. Um, I think there I just, there are Capullo isms in this. There story. are. Oh yeah, but there are. But there to be are. fair, there are lots of people that draw, try and draw like Capullo, right? I mean, it's, and there, yeah, because there's. I mean, you could you could have said uh, some of this is um, that uh, that 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 Bogovich or, or the, 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 no Gleb Melanikov or even. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of it in some places, and and it's been a while since we've seen it, but I, I I'd even say. That there's a couple of faces that remind me of good Ramita Jr. There was a cap face that looked like Ramita Jr. and I didn't think it was good Ramita Jr. and I'm like, that looks like fucking okay. G- no, there, there's, I'm like, what? there's a cap face that looks like he just got out of a Botox treatment. And it, yeah. it, it just, yeah, he just looks, he looks about, sad. Yeah. Uh, but the, the thing that gets me is, yeah. is aside yeah. from a, f- a, a bunch of covers, this is Capullo's first full length issue for Marvel. After being at DC for so long, correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, I think this falls short of the mark for being such a. Uh, Honestly, a this is a lot occasion. like Romita Junior coming back. Yeah, I wouldn't go that right? far. Like, yeah, no, I wouldn't say. Well, that. no, that's true. No, you're you're right. It, that's a because yeah, that's fair. But yeah. but uh, it is, I guess. Well, but if I'm, I guess, well, I, I still actually I'm going to stand by what I said because I mean like relative to expectation. Like, okay, I, no, that's yeah, right. I guess that. That's, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I thought again, I thought like, okay, this is going to be like we were saying with um with Blood Hunt. Like, oh, you know, listen, I'm, I freely admit it. It's that's not going to go down in the annals of history, right? Like, it, it is what it is. But there wasn't a page that Pepe drew that I didn't love, right? Like, I'm like, oh, but. Pepe, like what line work that you know, and it's I just assume that's what we were we're going to get from this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm like okay, yeah. like worst case scenario, I'm getting 22 pages of or maybe more. I don't know of uh, of Capullo drawing Marvel characters that I love. I mean, and these are characters that I love. I love Deadpool. I love Wolverine. Right. I love Cap. So it's like, yeah, 
Yeah. One of the things, uh, this this first issue is very reminiscent to me of another Capullo project. This thing, in both visual and, and tone of the story, what? feels like, no, Dark Knight's metal. It feels oh. r- like wacky, off the wall. Um, oh, okay. yeah. it, 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 a lot of it doesn't really make any sense, but it's just, I thought the issue was fun, but if, if you go into it, I mean, not for Hickman. I don't usually equate fun with Jonathan Hickman. No, so maybe no. this is a new experiment for him. I don't know. I enjoyed it, but when you have two powerhouse names like Hickman and Capullo on yeah. the cover, I expected, and maybe that's on me or on us, I expected a hell of a lot more than this. I will say that, um, I mean, as you know, I didn't, I didn't love, uh, it wasn't called Death Metal. Isn't that what it's called? Uh, there's Dark Knight's Metal. Dark Knight. And, and then there's Dark Knight's Death there's... Metal, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't a fan of that stuff, as you remember. I like you were, it. But I, no, but I, but I did, but I think the art was better. I, I think the art was super tight. Yeah. yeah. Well, like the Joker dragon or whatever it was. Like, I remember those visuals, like, or the, um. Oh, the Joker the, who uh, laughs or whatever. The, the spiker. Yeah. The Batman who laughs like the, the spiky Batman. That, like yeah, those you. were incredibly well done designs. And I still like, as we're talking, I can picture those, those images. And I think they were incredibly rendered. I don't think anything in this book struck me as like a, uh, seminal recreation or, 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 or character model that I would, want to see these characters drawn as on a regular basis and even mastermind is this is a new look weak. from I was, is this a new look for mastermind yeah, it's i don't weird. recall him ever looking like this yeah it must but be I unless i mean it's possible yeah i was going to say it seemed new to me but i it seemed like a it, it right like kind of like a brainiac with like these weird like kind of tubes going in and out of his head i yeah it's it's nothing i've ever seen from him I'm sure it's going to sell like hotcakes, though. So I guess the joke's on us. But um, yeah, we'll see. As we as we found out from Robert Kirkman spilling tea, uh, the mainstream comics aren't selling very well. Right. So uh, Batman sold sixty selling sixty thousand copies, which is that is. Just, if if that's, that's, that's your baseline, then you got problems. Yeah, that is that is wow. Because for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Robert Kirkman appeared um, um, at Heidi. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con. Heidi McDonald, who's the proprietor of the Comics Beat, which I think it's fair to these days is on a short list of, of best comics news sites. I mean, it's a it's admittedly a low bar these days, but but it's I think Comics Beat still does really good work. Anyway, she was um, hosting all week of San Diego, all weekend of San Diego, a uh, like a live uh, you know a live show. I think it was on YouTube streamed but she had kirkman on uh for a bit and they were talking about how there aren't sales charts anymore because you know of all the different distributors and whatnot and um but kirkman said yeah but you know we know the numbers because hey we don't know we know our own numbers and then we all talk we all share numbers so we know the numbers and he said that um uh, the enter uh the skybound stuff is is by far and away the number one selling or the top selling comics and are crushing marvel and dc and then um and then he mentioned just in a sort of little spilling tea quip that Batman's selling 62,000 copies. Um, so, you know, again, we don't talk about it. Ultimately, I don't care what a comic sells if I can, if I love it and it's available. Great. But like that, that does seem like a crazy low number for the, right. what's supposed to be the, you know, the, the, the it's can't miss top song. selling yeah. superhero yeah. book, right? A 62,000 copy uh, sell through at image for a creator is a very good deal. Oh, that's life changing, right? Yeah. But not at not at Marvel or DC. No, no, no. Should have taken Tom off it. <laughs> so here's a question: Are yes. you guys going to buy the rest of the series? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well, how many issues is it? Is it a three issue? I don't issue? even know. Six? I don't even know. Um, I guess we should know that, huh? Well, I, I can't imagine it can't go on for too long. It can't be six. There's no way that Capullo draw, he doesn't draw that fast. Um, <laughs> I'm just talking about. No, serious. Like I don't think he has story. A no, you're right. But I'm just six, talking yeah. about as far as the story goes. I don't think there's enough there to pad out six issues. Well, you, oh, yeah, or, no, yeah. Who I, just, knows? I, I don't see him. There, there could be some kind of a twist, because to just blow up Cap and Bucky. Can I tell you something? Like, I'm, I'm trying to look up how many issues it is, so I Googled it. And as I'm trying to find out how many issues it is, the first link is bleeding cool, and the headline is 
<laughs> Wolverine Revenge is utter fanfic. Yeah, I, I wouldn't give Bleeding Cool any play. You, you could have just said a site. Yeah. But, okay, well, uh, yeah, you're being specific, which is good. It's a good thing. If people want to find it, they can. Yeah, no. Uh, um, it, I'm trying to find I, I, I think, you know, I think your theory holds some water. That um, I don't think Hickman intentionally, what, he's from within? but I don't think he intentionally tanked gods. I think that was a heartfelt, earnest attempt to define some kind mm-hmm. of magic. And so great, but this this is very different. This and by the way, there's a red band edition of this as well. Can we stop with the red band edition? Oh stuff, my please? god! It's, you know, <laughs> these comics are these comics are consumed. Ninety eight percent of t- of the people that consume these comics are over the age of of sixteen to eighteen. Can we just, if you want to do a gory version, can you like, are we boundless now? Can you just give me the the gory version? Like, <laughs> we're but, fucking boundless now. Seriously, like, no. Like, what is going on? The thing that got me, and I had to laugh, but because he's our friend. I won't go on and on about it, but I think for a Marvel or DC book to do another edition that's more violent, more gory, more explicit, that makes a little bit of sense. But for a book coming out of Image to have a regular edition and a red band edition is insane to me. It, it is. It is. Which book? Stegman's new book. Not oh, Image. Oh no, that's uh, Distillery. Oh. Distillery, but still okay. That's distillery, an yeah. independent mm-hmm. publisher. To, to sure, have yeah. to have it come out from an independent publisher where in your press release you say the red band edition takes the story in wildly creative and and explorative directions. So you're telling me that the regular edition is doesn't? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just, yeah. Not, when you're yeah. taking marketing marketing cues that were invented by Boundless, you need to rethink things. I think so. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Red Band. For the record, this is a um, it's a five issue limited series. So I I apologize to Capullo. Wow. Currently, he has a long five issues is more than I thought he had in him. So there you go. Right. Red Band is the new Chromium cover. Nobody wants. Yeah, and and I I don't know. Like I guess I'll to be fair to Stegman. Like I don't know how different his his Red Band will be from the other one. But that's the Um, point. If it is wild, no, no, I get no. You're totally right on that. I'm just saying. But like I did read the. I read two of the of the uh, Blood Hunt. I did read two of the Red Band ish- issues in, as well as the regular. I didn't end up getting the rest, but and there's almost no difference. Like it's it's like three panels. It's it's not like it's not like the whole thing is like it's three panels that are different. Like it's. I, I read a Red Band um, issue over the weekend, Werewolf by Night. Yeah. Oh okay. uh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Yeah, just leave Jack alone, please. No. <laughs> Just don't don't fuck with Jack. Uh, needless to say, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, it. It was explicit. I mean, but if that's the road down which you want to travel, then just release one issue. It, one would expect a, a, a comic featuring a, a werewolf to be, uh, you know, uh, you would expect some kind of bloodshed. And, and this issue, I guess, on that front delivered but i i did enjoy the story or the art and it's just maybe it's me again i will i will come clean you know i love werewolf by night it's one of my favorite books ever uh the bronze version of it and and so yeah i i i do have sacred cows but this no Mm-mm. no sorry didn't like it yeah. let's let's bring it up let's let's Kick it up a few we notches. We should, because I, I read four things that I thought were phenomenal this week. Well, let's Excellent. hear them. Hmm? Let's hear them. What's it? Tell us. Well, I'm going to give you the one that I think you would like the most, Vince. Oh, boy. No, the four. I think this is one you, you'll, you may have even already checked out. I don't know. Okay. Um, we were, and this was born out of a conversation that we all had a couple weeks ago because we were singing, you were singing the praises, and then Dap and I concurred uh, of a book that was produced by New York Review Comics. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I took that conversation and um, went and said, oh, what, what's coming out by NYRC of late that I haven't ordered and, and got a couple books? And the first of those that I read is called Masters of the Nefarious Mollusk Rampage. Oh, shit. Don't, don't, because I have it. Don't go too okay. deep. Don't, just okay, for, yeah. Um, yeah, do what you want to do. I, I'll probably forget what you said by the time I read it. No, all good, all good. It's, um, 
So, yeah, it is by New York Review Comics. It's uh, written and drawn by Pierre La Police. Um, I admit I wasn't too familiar with the name going into this, but I did do a little reading. He is a French underground comics cartoonist. He's been making stuff for like 30 years. He's been out there. He's been doing his thing. But um, I'm pretty sure this is the first thing that I've read of his, unless I maybe saw something of his in like a, you know, it's possible I saw something in a, an anthology or something over the years. But uh, but nevertheless, um, this is just uproariously funny, I thought. Um, the premise is the Masters of the Nefarious are a trio of oddball crime solvers. Two brothers... Chris and Montgomery Themistekles, two Greek guys, and they're what looks to be like um, a zombie with a really bad skin condition named Fongor Fonzon. And they uh, they take it upon themselves to solve this issue of a bunch of squid creatures are invading the earth and eating people. Um, but the conceit of this book is just, it's the structure is awesome. It is, it is, it's like 160 some pages, but every page is a single, a single panel. And it's just so freaking orthogonal. It's so bizarre. Um, there isn't, there is a narrative in that these guys are out there trying to solve this crime, but like, yeah, but it's, it's the loosest of narratives. It's, it's this weird, funny, quirky book that like each panel makes you laugh out loud. It's like, um, it's just and it because they they just do like it just do random things like for example um they're getting together about to head off to try and go to a site where these squid creatures are and it says uh that all the, out of nowhere one of the panels is the one of the brothers gets a, a letter that says that he um has to go it says he just opens up a, a letter and says enlarge your penis now and the caption the, the, every panel it's like you have a one page panel and at the bottom is a is a like a far side esque type of a of a text, right? And it says, "But Chris receives a leaflet urging him to enlarge his penis at once." The next page. To do so, he must undergo a very very risky operation in a shady Mexican clinic. The next page. He goes. <laughs> While waiting, Fongor, who's the zombie dude, watches the Couscous World Cup, and then you go forward and it says a couple a couple pages. It says several months later, Chris returns from Mexico with a giant penis. It's like out of if, nowhere they just go on these asides, and it's only. like at one point, what's that? I said, if only. Yeah, right. At one point, um, they're heading to the Pacific Islands to continue the investigation, and it's like uh, they resume their investigation to head to the Pacific Islands on water skis, and you see the Themistocles brothers just on water skis across the ocean, and then it says <laughs> Fongor takes a plane because he's afraid of water skiing, <laughs> and then while on the plane. There's a dude who's like sitting in the in the in the aisle of the plane, like like sitting like uh, cross like like what we used to call Indian style, right? Like, and it's like it's like a passenger is grating nutmeg in the middle of the plane, and then Fongor snaps and kicks him and kills him, like beats him to death. It's just like all these strange little like asides. It's like totally out of nowhere. There's a there's a dude named Proto Joel who is a um, basically he's just he's a being that that is just from the uh, the waist down, like. It's, you know, it's literally just waist down. And then the next page is the doctor giving birth, holding the, him coming out of his birth and says little, 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 like two legged, like it's like this little baby with just the two legs <laughs> and a mop of hair where his, where his torso should be and a little, little baby penis. And it's like, he was born like that. He's the opposite of a man with no legs. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> like it's fucking ridiculous. Stop. You're kidding. And the art, the art is, um, really remin like the tone in the art were really evocative to me of shaky cane. It's a yeah, little, a little looser, bit, yeah, yeah, a little looser, a little freer than Shaky. I mean, th- Shaky's like pretty tight with his with his line, um, but it's like the same vibe and the same like David Lynchian, like what the fuck am I looking at reading? But it's still funny and it's still engaging, which I think is a really delicate thing to balance. I don't think that's very easy to pull off, um, and they pull it off, and and it's just super wild and nonsensical and absurdist, but it's hilarious. It really is funny. I, I just. Like at one point they're they're trying to go to one of the sites and out of nowhere the one brother can't get through the gate because his shoes have gotten to be like the size of like cars and it's like well they swelled up because of the humidity and you're like what like why would you sh-? like what but it's just cra- it's just crazy it's crazy like at one point he takes a dump in the middle of the of the floor 
And then he opens up a bag of bacteria that eat, like, yeast, and they eat the poop. And because it's, like, mutant poop, they grow into giant monsters, and he uses them to kill the squid. It's, like, the whole thing is just absurdist and funny and weird. And you, you, you read it and you think, what the hell is going through Pierre Lapolice's head? Like, what? Like what? What is he? Is he tripping? Is he smoking the Genja? Is he just, just, is he just a weird dude? And and it's also like, man, I wish I was that creative. Like I'm, I'm not that creative. I wouldn't be able to come up with this. So, just a beautifully wonderful book. And the cover of the book is, um, is actually, uh, it's a picture of a weird mutant dude on like a bunch of stairs heading down a, a road, and that is Fon Gorfonzheim, and he takes his he takes his steerable staircase to the Themistocles house when they call him to start this investigation. It's like, what the fuck's a steerable staircase? Like, what? who comes... Like, why was he thinking, like, I should put this dude on a giant staircase with wheels? Like, what? Like, none of it makes any sense, well, but there, because of it, it all works, and it's hilarious. There is a trend in the paranormal where staircases have been found in very odd places, like in the middle of a okay. forest... It could be playing off that. I mean, like I said, I have yeah. the book, haven't read it, but um, I do my homework. And when I saw the art for this and just the general, um, the envelope in which this stuff was created, I was like, I need this book. Because oh, yeah. It's just so, that's why I told you. I, th- I read this thinking like, I mean, I think Dapper will enjoy it too, but that was like, oh, Vince, this is a read of Vince's Alley. I yeah. mean, this is like. Yeah. To me, these know. are the best kind of comics. Just, yeah, it's great. It's great. Exactly. It's. We talk about this so much in the last few years, but it's like, I just want to, when I read things, I, I just want to feel like that I'm reading something different, you know, that, that's just, that, that, that surprises me in some way. And it can, it can surprise, there's lots of ways you can surprise me. I mean, it can be a relatively straight line, linear story. Like the, um, like the Brubaker Phillips stuff is pretty straightforward and linear. It's not like, they don't take many chances in terms of like the narrative structure, but it surprises me in how fucking good it is and how well it's paid. You know what I mean? But like, so there's lots of ways that when I say surprise me, but, but in this case, this is just one of those absurdist things that I, I, you know, I just, I, I just found it so endearing. And, and I, I totally, this is also the one of the four things that I love this week that I, I totally get will not be for a lot of people. Like, like if you, if you try this and you think, I just don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't get it. Like I, that's perfectly valid. Like there's a certain type of reader that I think can vibe with this. And and I'm I don't like I'm not gonna cast a sh- I'm not gonna cast a side at you if you don't vibe with this like this is not like this doesn't have universal appeal I don't sure. think but right. it worked for me cool yeah well I have something uh, again from another independent publisher but this how do I approach this because um, again it was the best of times it was the worst of times it, it's called a drift on a painted sea. It's from Avery Hill Publishing. I don't believe it's out yet. I think it's coming out very soon. Uh, it's by Tim Bird with paintings by Sue Bird. Okay. Half, I don't want to say half, but um, a good chunk of the book are Tim's uh, very clean, uh, fixed with line, um, flat colored comics. Uh, maybe somewhat reminiscent, and I'm going to throw this out there and you're going to get the wrong impression, but in approach, he's close to Chris Ware. It, just because of the thin line, the the, the flat-ish colors, uh, very pastel colors in this. And what the book is, it's a lot of, uh, speaking solely for myself, and that's all I can do, a lot of my memories are tied to art, even in association with things that aren't art, like my father. I have a lot of memories of my dad because while he wasn't um, steeped in the art world, he did love Luciano Pavarotti, right? So whenever I hear Pavarotti, I think of my father, who was a truck driver. So if you can imagine the very meaty, pawed, burly truck driver guy sitting in a a a, a recliner just ecstatic over Luciano Pavarotti that was my dad so uh and, and other things like um long story short i guess tim bird his mother sue for the a good chunk of her life 
enjoyed to paint. She obsessively painted, uh, loved landscapes. Uh, but all art, I mean, there, she did collage work, she did still life, but, but her, one of her joys was, was painting landscapes, specifically the sea. And, and the book opens with, he's like, you know, one of my, the things I remember most about my childhood was one of my mother's paintings, which he's, which he thought was good enough to, to be hung in a museum. And it's, 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 it, there, there is a, a nautical theme to it. That's fish and, and crab. And there's a, a net, like a fishing net in the background. And it's, it's very earthy. There are seashells in the, in the painting. And he's like my mom. And then he goes into the story about his mother who, who enjoyed painting, took a, a few classes, but you know, then had children and so she pulled away from art, but then she, the magic returned and she became obsessively devoted to her art. Not in a, in a, in a sense where, uh, she sought something other than the mere joy of painting. Like it wasn't to get a job or to become famous or to hang in a gallery. She just enjoyed painting. And she uh she ages in in the narrative she gets cancer and she dies and the story is peppered with her paintings sue's real life paintings so tim is not only reliving the memory of his mother through her paintings and the narrative of him telling you the story of his mother, but he's archiving her work and introducing you to this woman through this sequential art. And it's insane. It, it, it is so, it, I mean, there, there are parts of it that are, are very hard to read because um, she gets cancer and, and it's treated but then it comes back and it takes a toll on her. And as she's in the hospital on, on, you know, the, the, in the hospital bed, she's dreaming of herself in a boat on the ocean, the very same body position of her in the, the hospital bed. She's in the same position in a boat on the ocean. And it's just, it's heartbreaking. It really is because the the one thing, not the one thing, but a thing in her life that brought her great joy was to paint the sea. And so as the narrative unravels, you get to see notable places and locations with which Tim interacted with her mother. And in a lot of instances, um, he'll mention a book and there's a reproduction of the cover of the book along with seashells. And there's a sequence of he and his mother collecting seashells on the beach. And they're just having a great time and talking. And, you know, she's talking about painting and art and he's lapping it up. And then later, after his mother got sick, he goes to a, um, a coffee house. And the that goofy shit that they do with your coffee and the cream and they make they make like designs on the on the coffee I don't know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. How how they do little decorative things on your coffee, right? The um, shape on the coffee surface is looks like a seashell, and that triggers that triggers the memory of of him spending that time with his mom. It's it's it, it's it's um, I don't want to say it's a wonderful book. It, it it is it is a wonderful book because it 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 emphasizes the inextricability with memory and art and how it 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 certain facets of our relationships are tied to art and design and it's i just thought it was a, it was a, a wonderful book but it's I don't want to say it's an easy read. There's a, a, a motif within the story of waves. Waves crashing on the beach. Um, I believe the end papers are, are waves. Let me get to the first page here. Um, 
yeah, the end papers are waves. And within the narrative, there's, I think at one point, there's a whole page that it's just waves just crashing on the beach. And to me, that symbolizes like the ebb and flow of memory. Not only that, but of 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 human life too. I mean, we're here, and then we're not. We we come in strong, and then we recede. She she was very potent as as a a young and middle aged and even elderly woman with her her craft, and then her life and her skill and her memory and everything just receded. Uh, it's it's an amazing amazing book. And Sue's really good. Like I, I think her paintings are great. The the paint is applied in. It's not self conscious at all. I mean, she's just laying down color in ways that please her. I, I don't. It, it's almost um, critique proof because once the once it's explained to you that this woman sought nothing more than just employing her craft, then. Should the paintings be subject to the same criteria as other works of art? Yes and no, because she didn't live in that world. So she was just painting. I mean, they do. The composition is great. The paint application is wonderful. The palette is is outstanding. Like you could pick this stuff apart, and I, I think it would not suffer under close scrutiny. But she didn't live in that world. She didn't care to be in that world, and that's not the 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 um thing for which she created these things like i i tell my students all the time there are elements and principles of design rules that all creative types follow until they don't and in order to not follow these rules you have to be a name brand you have to have some kind of renown. If you if if you are a known entity and you disregard the rules, well, you're just being cutting edge. But if you're a young student or someone a, a, a naive, um, uh, like a, a green artist, and you don't follow the rules, well, you'll be taken to task because you didn't follow the rules. So, on the one hand, rules matter, but on the other, it's just a bunch of shit that that they 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 throw at un known entities but once you're like warhol or banksy you could do whatever the fuck you want people think you're brilliant so rules matter but they don't really right and and i think her paintings are just they're to me they they bring me great joy because i think she's extremely talented and i think there's you could see the 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 just love in every stroke that she's just having a great time just slapping this color down and She's not trying to dazzle anyone. She's just trying to capture the image in your he in her head and get it on on the canvas. It's a great book. So uh, and it's not expensive. I think it's like fifteen bucks. Um, it's not super long. Maybe sixty some pages, eighty pages. I don't know. It's like fifteen, eighteen dollars, and it's worth every freaking penny. Did you say the publisher was Avery Hill? Thank you. Yeah, it's another one of those publishers that are just like everything I've read from them. I, I talked about a, a couple Avery Hill books uh, a couple a while back. Um, they're another one of those publishers like um, Living the Line. Like, where have you been all my life? Yeah. You got to put out more stuff. This one is definitely worth your time and attention. If you have a, a, a soul, and I, I think most of us do, depending on how you define existence, uh, if you're a feeling individual, and you, uh, something about the creative process and the desire to express oneself, oneself with paint, and this book is just going to bring it all home for you. I, it's a wonderful thing, and I only hope that someone would uh, create a tribute to me after I'm gone, like Tim did for his mother. Because it's just an amazing, it's amazing tribute, testament to this woman. Yeah. To be there and to be vibrant and, and alive and then to not be there. So all he has left of her, aside from the memories, are hundreds of, of paintings and drawings and, and stuff. And it's like, so she's still living. She still exists through her art. It's a great book. Again, A Drift on a Painted Sea. Just go get it. Yeah. Hmm. I think you both would like okay. this. Okay. Did he go somewhere? 
Uh, he's saying that uh, we can't hear him for some reason. Oh, boy. Is he in the wrong server? No. He's right there. I no, can he's see here. Him. Yeah, jiggle your mic or take your, f your foot off the pause or the mute button. Oh, he's gone. Oh, well. Dap, what'd you read? That's good. <laughs> let's see. Let's well, see I if mean, he goes. Following that, following that, like anything's going to. Can you hear me? Oh, yep. Yeah, yep, we can good. hear you. Weird. I, I literally, uh, I had to, I had to pause for the call. Then came home and uh, didn't realize I was recording. And so I paused it to say goodnight to him. And then when I unpaused it, you guys couldn't hear me. I was trying to respond to you. And I, I was like, why, why isn't he? Like, no one's saying anything, and then I looked, and it's like, oh, I'm not seeing my, my uh, name light up in white when I speak, so. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, yeah, apparently I have to quit and then come back anytime I mute, so. Baby, baby steps. Uh, that's weird. But I was going to say, I mean, I um, did you back the Kickstarter for this? Is that how you got it? No, I'm on the Avery Hill press list. Oh, cool, look at you. Yeah. As Lottie both Dallas. of you are, I guess, because how am I on it and you're not? I am almost certainly not because I had not heard of this book until. Well, you I'll send it. you my contact information, and uh, you can you can get on it. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, I'm looking. I just searched for Avery Hill. I have nothing in my inbox. So. Okay. Yeah, because I think the last sounds great though, and something. and the, you're right. The the paintings juxtaposed against his you know yeah. very I think clean sort of like. You know, panels is is really nice. It's riveting. Really, really it really nice. is because it's yeah. two two totally different styles. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm sorry. I, did you say it was his wife or his mom? Or his what did mom, you know? his mother. My, his okay, mother. cool. Yes, yeah. nice. Yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, it looks really good. And again, there's there's a there's a an element of this presentation that is uh, unspeakable. You can't really define mm. it with words, right? It's the bond between a, a, a parent and child and a, 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 a gift that the child never knew he was being given until much later in life when the source of that gift is no longer around. Like th there, right. there are clues in the book where he appreciates his mother's work and he um, sits and listens to her talk about it. But, I mean, when you're young – does that really resonate with you? Yeah, hopefully, but on what level? How do you mm -hmm. have the do you have the capacity to understand what's being given to you when you're young, as opposed to when you're older and you're like, "Holy shit, my mother was like a powerhouse," and 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 now this is what I have: this stack of stuff that she made. I want to tell other people about it. That's basically what this book is, and it's wonderful. Right. Yeah. Dap was talking, and you totally that sound great. No, 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 no. Because I need. To, first of all, anything, anything I have on tap is is uh, gonna be a bit of a letdown after that review. Um, nice, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, um, but tell us. No, I will. Uh, there's a. Um, so this was a series from Image. Uh, a bunch of years ago, not a bunch, but like uh, pre-pandemic. Uh, 2019 is when the series started, and I read the first few issues and got the first trade, and then I found, and, and well, I bought the first two trades, thinking that there were only two trades, that that was the whole series. Um, but before I sat down to read it from start to finish, I found out that there is, in fact, a third trade concluding the series. And I was like, well, then I'm not, I can't start this because I don't know when the hell I'm going to get it. And and it was, this was before Heroes. And sure enough, our first day, that Friday morning, when Vince and I made that beeline to the first dude with the trades, I found the third volume of Crowded. So I had the entire run, all 17 issues in these three trades. And um, so I sat down a couple weeks ago, read the whole thing, and it, it ended a little different than how I kind of expected it to go based on how it started. And, and the premise, for anybody who didn't read it, this is written by Christopher Sabella. And the art is by uh, Rose Stein and Ted Brandt. Uh, Triona Farrell does colors for most of the series. Uh, however, um, 
uh, Diana Sousa does the last two issues. Um, and it, it's, it's set in the very, very near future. I think the pitch was 10 minutes in the future because basically the entire, the entire world, or at least the country, um, everything is based on apps, uh, ride shares and food and everything and anything, you know, the, the reselling clothes and buying houses. Um, but in this future, uh, there is a crowdfunding platform called Reaper, which basically, um, it's a platform for assassination. So if somebody pisses you off, you can set up a campaign and you'll have a bunch of hitmen or assassins or mercenaries, whatever, uh, hunt down that person. It, it's the, the campaign's only for a set amount of time. So it's not like it can go on for years. Um, and Charlie, uh, Charlene, she, uh, she, Charlie Ellison has a campaign against her. There's a million dollar bounty on her head. So she needs a bodyguard and you use the defend app for that. And she finds the lowest rated bodyguard woman's name is Vita Slater and, um, or Slatter. And she actually, she used to be a secret service agent, except something bad happened. Um, this is a very queer friendly series. I absolutely adore the hell out of it. The art is amazing. I love, I love this, the, the pairing of, of Stein and Brandt and so much so that money in your travels circles back to them. But this, uh, Charlie is, I'm, I'm, she comes across as a very, not quite horrible person. Everything is self-inflicted. She, she, she's also comes across as very entitled and, and nothing is ever her fault. When you do press her, when you try to ask her questions, she, she works a way around to, to get out of answering the questions. Um, she, she tries to be straightforward, but there's something in her brain that prevents that from actually happening. Um, but for Vita, this is just a job. I'm supposed to keep you alive until the end of this campaign, and that's it. Um, but Charlie pushes buttons. She, uh, she She's very flirty. She finds Vita extremely attractive. Vita is, is definitely the mask of the two. Uh, and Vita has her own baggage, and, and she has an ex. Her ex is a, uh, is a detective on the police force. The entire, the, the, the first bunch of issues takes place in L.A., um, but they have to get out of L.A. because Charlie can't do what Vita needs her to do in order for Vita to protect her. So they head to Vegas, and more hijinks ensue. Um, Everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry, that wh whether they're on public transportation or they're trying to rent another car or any place they're trying to get, people recognize Charlie, so everybody's always trying to kill her. Um, there is one particular assassin after them. Her name is Cersei, and she grew up online. Her parents basically loved social media and, and, and everything from their pregnancy to birth and slightly afterwards... It was just all about being in the spotlight and, and, and just trying to let the world know who they are and how this is a great thing. And the child was born and they used her as a prop for a while, but then they got tired of her and she gets revenge on her parents, which I'm not going to get into, but Cersei becomes a very, very talented assassin. And, um, and so she's now going to go after Charlie, but uh, there's something about Vita that she finds enchanting, and, and she's having trouble uh, going through with it. And then things go in a completely weird and wild direction. We, we, we meet a, a young woman who basically her, her father and a bunch of his like um, uh, off-the-grid two-way sovereign citizen type folks they, they they end up they 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 live in a missile silo and years ago vita infiltrated that band and uh to protect 
this young woman, the, the, this man's daughter. Uh, so, so, so Vita and Charlie go to the silo, find the young woman. She now has like, it's not a cult, but she's just got a bunch of people around her who kind of just believe in, in what, what she's doing. And, um, trying to just make the world a better place, kind of just, you know, avoid all, all the social media apps, things like that. Uh, that doesn't really go the way Vita was hoping. Um, there's, there are feelings caught, there's emotions that are high. It's, it is an extremely wild ride. I could not stop once I started, once I really got into it. Because there was a pause between arcs and I never went back to it, which is when I found the trades, and I was like, "This is perfect." Now I can finally get back to this. So, um, but once once you get into it, it, it's very difficult. It was very very difficult for me to put down once I got going. Um, the way the way Charlie's problems are resolved, more or less, because she's trying to find out who the hell put the hit on her. Who did she piss off? And and basically, you know the type of person she is. There's bound to be more than one person who's who. She's pushed enough buttons that people are going to. And then as the other thing is that it's not just the million dollar campaign on her. Other people start putting money in on it, increasing the bounty because she's pissing off more people. So um, she's trying to find out who the hell put the hit on her. And and that mystery gets thrown into it, and it's just it is an incredibly wild ride. Sabello writes some witty and clever dialogue. The um, the different app names and what they do, and and how close we are to some of these things. Maybe not the assassination app, but 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 some of these things actually coming to fruition. Um, it's it, it 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 can be prescient in some cases, but this was this was an absolute blast. I. Um, I hope I would love to see this. I, I doubt it's going to happen. I would lo- if it's Kickstarter, great. If it's crowdfunded, funnily enough, then I'll definitely back it. But I, I would love to see this all collected in one nice hardcover, just so that these three loose trades aren't aren't sitting on my shelf. But this was this was a fantastic series. I thought it was a um, I thought it was a lot of fun. The uh, the art gets gets slicker, more polished as the series continues. Uh, they, they they really get into their groove. Um, there's just some great characters, great line work, uh, and and just the way things work in this world, um, which just straddles that line between just close to being realized and and uh, and exaggerated enough where something like that could never happen. Uh, they they do a real good job of um, of meshing that that all together. But but Crowder was was an absolute joy. I'm glad it glad I finally got to finish it um and and it's it's one of those things like i said it came out started in 2019 i do not know um when it finally wrapped up it was probably 21 or yeah uh sometime in late 2021 it looks like it uh it finished because the last trade is uh later february 2022 so took them a couple of years to, to get all those issues out but uh well, well worth the wait, and um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was an absolute blast. Neat. Neat. You are an error, sir. Am I? This yes, because this came out in 2018, and I know this because you spoke lovingly about issues one and two back in episodes 557 and 562. Wow, both thank in you. 2018. Yes. We have our own way. Yeah, okay, machine. because yes, we do. Thank God for that. No, the, the first trade. Has the copyright of twenty. There you go. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. So twenty eighteen to, the... to, to twenty twenty one. Yeah, I was gonna say Vince wasn't on the first episode. It was you and I with Caleb talking about. Comics. Oh shit! Nice. And and crowded number one was part of an image orama. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, super. Hey, hey. I, it's it's it, it, super queer friendly. I thought. Uh, I thought. Yeah. I, I just thought it was a blast. I, want yeah, to I talk remember about... you talking about this and really enjoying the first issues because I read them because you mentioned them and I, much like you, I, I didn't, through no fault of it, I, I didn't go back and finish it. So I, I did, I, I had no idea it went for twelve issues. So uh, seventeen. Thanks. Oh, seventeen. Oh, thanks for the reminder. Okay. There you well, go. then I'll, I'll, um, I'll bring these in October and then leave okay, them and whatever. Word. Word. Sweet. I want to talk about something. Because mm, uh, I I feel like it needs to be discussed, but not at length. 
if that makes any sense. It does. I finished the uh, Steve Rude written and drawn weekly Shit. comic uh, Nexus. Oh, nice. The newspaper right, right. strips. Mm -hmm. I'm about halfway through. Good. Battle good. for Thune World. You'll probably feel the same way that I do. And, but most importantly, someone else uh, mirrors my assessment of these books. And it couldn't get any better for me. But anyway, it's mm -hmm. called Nexus, the newspaper strips. Volume 2, Battle for Thune World, five-issue series, released weekly by Steve Rude, very inexpensively priced, a buck or less an issue. I didn't know this, but not only is Steve Rude doing his own Nexus, Mike Barron is still doing his own Nexus. Yep. So Rude's version is considered an alternate storyline nexus barons i guess is considered the same time the same yeah continuation of what came before i didn't investigate it very deeply at the before recording so i don't know the specifics both of the creators are doing their own versions of nexus so i'm wondering if and because because i did read recent I, I did read not too long ago the baron written um yeah, me too. Nexus Mini. That that I, I forgot who the artist was, but so I'm guessing maybe around like issue 100 or something, or whatever the 100th issue was. The, the, there may have been like I guess a fork where Baron continued the story that he and Rude started, and Rude's doing his own thing, which is pretty neat. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, but the this five issue series just um, slammed the point home that my love of the original Nexus leans far more heavily towards the Steve Rude side of the equation than the Mike Barron side of the equation. Because I read the Barron Nexus stuff. It was like maybe one or two issues. And without Steve, and I know Steve didn't do all of Nexus. I mean, Paul Smith did some, but there, there were some artists that, that did Nexus in addition to Steve Rude. But the bulk of Nexus is by Steve Rude, visuals anyway. And so for me, without Steve Rude, I don't think the attraction is there as in the, as with the Mike Barron stuff. I didn't think it was bad, but there was some crucial element, which was the dude, missing from it. But in the back of every issue, there are letters. And I believe in issue number five, Eric Larson writes in. And he, oh. sa he says, Steve, my dude. I, I I want this I want your Nexus to be successful. You know Eric. Eric does not mince words. If he has something to say, he's not gonna beat around the bush. He's just gonna tell you. He's like, something's off with this book. He's like, I I the lettering is wonky. I kind of agree with that. I mean Rude's not a professional letterer. The lettering's not horrible, but it's it's not it's not on very stable uh, foundation. It, it's okay. It's passable. Do you really want passable lettering I, on a book like Nexus? I don't know. And he's like, the the storyline is to paraphrase. He goes, it does, there's just too too much, too many asides. The the narrative is all over the place. It's not streamlined. The dialogue doesn't ring true. There are instances that really don't make sense in in terms of the big picture. Like, what are you doing? I, I I want you to succeed on this, and and of course Steve doesn't agree with anything that Eric says, but I think Eric is totally on the mark. I each one of these five issues is beautiful. It's Steve Rude. There's a double page spread of Judah destroying tanks and and troops, and it it's and, and it's it's actually like a Rube Goldberg meets Family Circus type illustration it's it's two pages and they're the instances are numbered so you can follow them in order and it's just judah on the battlefield ripping the shit out of these troops and it is gorgeous but there are things within the story that don't make a whole lot of sense the is like this so all this sprung from the coming of gormandu which which was his a, a a pastiche of galactus and where you have Galactus, you have to have a herald. So Gormando had a herald named Gnosis. Gnosis appears in this series, but 
it doesn't really amount to any, anything. Like he shows up and he's cool. The design is great, and he's he, he, the, the rude chews up the real estate with which is beautiful drawing. But it doesn't really matter to the story. Like he doesn't have a crucial role in this five issues. Like he could have been excised and, it, and it, whatever. When the story starts, Elam's in shambles, and Horatio's not being a great husband or a great father. He's tired, he's he's overworked, he's pulled in multiple directions, and Sundra's like, look, we got to get off this shithole. I want to go back to Earth. Whether you're whether or not you're coming with me is your decision. I'm taking Harry, and we're we're going to Earth, whether you're coming or not. And Horatio's like, of course I'm coming with you. I'm your husband, right? And that leads into the next series. But while that's happening... Dave is found and he's near death. So they th- they put him in the tank and it, they they have to go back to Thune and it's a trap and this this story unravels and there's a character death that is horrible and I'm not going to go into it because it's meaningless and it doesn't have any ramifications in the narrative like I don't understand and I don't want to spoil it because Dap didn't read it this character does something that amounts to nothing. And I don't understand for the life of me how it played into the storyline. It makes no sense. It, this character just does something that causes them to die. Okay. There you go. Um, there's a weird sequence with Sundra and... Um, what's her name? Uh, Judah's girlfriend... Gladys, right? Where they're oh, okay. just they're just having some girl time. And it's like maybe four pages, but it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't it doesn't play into the, the other than Sundra's alone while Horatio's off tooling the galaxy. Like it doesn't make any sense. Even the jokes within it are just strange. Like I can't tell if the dude is alluding to lesbian sex or if it's just Sundra and and Gladys making weird faces like I don't understand it's so strange and I totally agree with everything Eric says like maybe if this was three issues and all the extra shit was pulled out of it and it was just a very streamlined nexus accompanying Dave back to Thune to save Fred or or Judah right because Judah's being held uh, prisoner or dead that would be cool. Like that's awesome. I want. I'm there for that. But I, there's just so many other things going on. Um, little Harry's having dreams, and that would be neat. You know, Baron did that too, where where um, Horatio was having you know the, the nightmares, and even the villain of this is is a a person that had escaped Nexus's hit list. The only person to ever escape Nexus's hit list is the villain of this thing. So that's cool. Like, that's exciting. But there's just, it's like there's too many things in the soup. You don't really get um, one taste because there's so many other ingredients where they're all fighting with each other. I, 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 but I enjoyed it. So I, I had a, a little heart to heart with myself and I said, okay, um, if art, if comics are half art and half narrative, right? This would get at least 50% because it's Steve Rude. Arguably one of the best that's ever been. Whether or not you agree with that, I don't give a shit because I believe it. I think Rude is one of those guys that is just a cut above almost everybody else. Right? So because it's Steve Rude, I gave him extra 10%. So I enjoyed 60% of this five-issue series. And I'll give him another 10% for the good parts of the narrative. So 70%, that's not a horrible grade but it's not there's no bragging rights for that right especially when you you parted ways for whatever reason with a person i consider a competent writer mike Barron. whatever you have to say about mike Barron, he's a competent writer he gets the job done i wouldn't have read hundreds of issues of nexus if it wasn't for mike Barron and steve rude right so that's what i'm saying i enjoyed this and i know this was supposed to be short 
I want to see Steve Rude do really well. He needs an editor or a consultant or somebody that can come in and just polish up the the narrative because it's all over the place. That's it. Um, the, mm, these old heads trying to keep doing their own thing, like I root for them, but I think in a way it serves as an illustration of how a supporting cast and structure are important, you know? Right. And the, the supporting cast in Nexus is great. It, no, no, it, I don't mean story-wise. I mean, again, like, like you're saying, like he, he can still draw his ass off, but yeah, like not like, but just because you can do one thing well, doesn't mean you can make a great comic. Yeah, and, and it's really strange. He has a quote from a notable person or a noteworthy person on every page. Mm. it's just a distraction you don't need a quote on every page and then in the later issues maybe in issue four but definitely in issue five the first narrative caption is also a quote so you have Mm. a quote within the narrative then you have a quote just added for shits and giggles and i but the visuals are i mean he's still a powerhouse i don't rude is is amazing He's one of those guys that is beholden to the silver and bronze age when they did it the right way. And I got to give him, I think he's just, he's fun, he's a phenomenal talent. It's just that I, I, I want more Steve Rude Nexus. So I just, I hope that he's not going to take Eric Larson's words to heart. He's just going to keep doing no. what he's doing. Yeah. He's 67 years old. I would have, I would have guessed younger than that. But. He's just a freaking killer talent. There's there's hmm. very few guys out there that are as good as Steve Root. Yeah. It's I mean, there's a lot of these guys they get churned through like they I don't know what it is, they they maybe they were always Mavericks, right? But then like they get to a point, I don't know if it's that they burned bridges or they didn't want to play the game anymore, but like, you know, they're kind of just out there doing their own thing and I personally get tired of the like like I can only read so many times these these some of these old heads talking about how like the industry's fucking them. Like, it's like, well, there's plenty of people in your contemporaries that are still kicking ass and taking names, dude. So like, maybe you're a part of the problem too. But when you read the, the, there's like a, uh, and the inside front cover uh, of all the issues, there's like a Dave Sim type letter from the president where Steve just talking to, he's like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is what I've encountered. And comics are great. And, and so he's not as, wizened or 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 surly as a lot of his contemporaries well that's good okay there's an there's an optimism within these pages and i i would love to know the metrics because to release five issues weekly for a dollar or less an issue like i i i I, how was this funded is this from kickstarter or is, is he funding this himself like where did the money come from it's a gamble and I, I would love to know how many people this series actually reached. Like, what were the print right. runs on these things? 10,000? 20,000? I mean, I think that's being very optimistic, mm-hmm. even even at a buck an issue. But I I, I, I just – I'm aghast at, at how well this man still plies his craft, but I think he may be biting off a little bit too much – in terms of trying to write and draw it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would guess he picked up some stuff from from Baron by osmosis. I mean, you can't work with somebody for that long and just be exposed to their scripts and their direction and and having to craft a story around their, uh, you know, the way Baron does it. You you have to pick up something after a while, right? So I guess I don't know. I don't know. He's yeah. I I don't know. I it it was enjoyable. If you find them, they're they're cheap. They're a buck a piece. Pick them up, if if only to see one of the the best doing what they do. But yeah, the story's weird. It's janky. It's it's all over the place. So he did uh, the. He's done. I'm looking here. Root has done 14 Kickstarters. Uh, the Battle for Thune World. So this was, was kickstarted. Yeah. Yeah, it uh, raised twenty eight thousand five hundred seventeen dollars. Nice. Well, um, there you go. That that 
um, the proof is in the pudding because he didn't scrimp on these issues. Uh, they're, they're, they're packed. Um, not only with mm -hmm. Nexus content, but there's back matter and there's letters and there's process pages. So yeah, you, for a dollar, I mean, you, you're definitely getting your money's worth. It, it, it's just, it's a little weird, uh, a little odd, uh, cumbersome and, and I think overweighted by stuff that doesn't need to be in the story. Yeah. Mm. Goddamn beautiful to look at them. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's he's definitely somebody who is um who is a way more talented artist than he is a writer. I can appreciate the stories he wants to tell. Um but yeah, I mean and and, and great that I know it was of its era. I know the way Bannerin leans, I, I I know the type of personality he has, but Nexus as whatever stories they wanted to tell I was buying Nexus. I was reading Nexus. I was adoring Nexus because Rude was drawing it. Right, right. And I bought, I mean, from the, I bought all of the same, I have a complete run of Nexus from the original, um, what were they, Capital? Capital yeah, Comics. Three issues of Capital. Yeah, and, and then, then. And then at the first. First, and then when it went to Dark Horse. Like, I have Dark every, Horse. every floppy Nexus ever published. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the, the, the series holds a, a very special place in my heart. So the a lot of the joy from this was just seeing Steve Root's artwork. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Have you ever met him? No. Yeah, I feel no. like he doesn't do shows. That X Men stuff, Children of the Atom, that he did for Marvel was awesome. Oh my god! And that Thor story was it? Uh, Godstorm, so good. The oh, visuals yeah. were amazing. I mean, it's freaking Steve Root. Mm -hmm. And he drew that. Uh... That Dave Gibbons written World's Finest. Yes. Right? That, that, yeah. that prestige format. And um, uh, Superman Hulk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You can go home again, but not all the way. It's like he tried to go mm -hmm. home, he got to the front stoop, but he couldn't unlock the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. Sad. Not sad. It was, yeah, yeah it was still enjoyable, but whatever. Maybe I'm yeah. just, I'm expecting too much from an artist who's trying to be a writer as well. Yeah. Listen, I mean, you know. It is what it is, right, Mike? It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> so, Jason, what else you got? Unless you want to save well, it for your, in your travels. No, well, uh, let me, um, let me hit this one. This is uh, from our friends at Fantagraphics. Uh, this is a gentleman whose work I was late to come to, but discovered him, I think, in like 2019 with a book called The Anthology of Mind. Um, I'm talking about uh, Tommy Mustry, um, who's a Finnish cartoonist. But uh, we got a new book from him through Fanta last month called Future. And it is glorious. It is a um, it's a soft cover. It's an oversized soft cover. Um, like treasury sized uh, in terms of the dimensions. Um, and it is a collection of the 10 issues of future, which was his long running uh, solo anthology. Now I'm guessing Vince, you've read some future. Yeah. No, I love uh mystery and I have half of future, which is why I bought this uh, as well. So you bought, have you, have you received it yet or no? No. Okay. Well, I don't know that I can spoil it for you're you because you've no, read you're it. No, you're not going to spoil yeah. it. Yeah. Um, for, for those that don't know, um, this is uh, – Moostry put out 10 issues. The last one, I think, came out either late last year or early this year, and he announced it would be the last one. Uh, so like I said, this is a collection of the entire thing. Um, it is – it's him writing and drawing everything. It is an anthology, but it's so wonderful because um, it is visually – I mean, you cannot believe that one person is drawing all these things. I mean, every, um, like most anthologies, it's, it is, it is, um, uh, it is like, it's, it is done like sequentially in the sense, meaning like, like there's a, it, almost everything you see in issue one does reappear in subsequent issues. So it's not like he's just doing whatever he feels like for an issue and then going on to new stuff in the next issue. It is like a lot of the, a lot of the, 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 uh, the ideas progress through all the issues or at least a chunk of them. Um, but I mean, every, 
every every part of the book is just a completely different visual style. It's he he does he does painting, he does charcoal, he does yeah tight comic you know bright ink like animation style. He does gouache. I mean, he does like you know like super rough like indie like sketchbook like you know almost almost abstract. I mean, he really just. It's like a tour de force on all the ways that you can illustrate, and it's by one gentleman, and that is hella impressive. Um, and it was interesting to see because the anatomy, the I'm sorry, the anthology of mind is not quite like that. It's 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 a, it's more of a singular style, but um, but it was delightful. I mean, you know, I feel like we're in a really great. We've talked about a lot of anthologies this year. This is a great year for anthologies, and this is just more of the same. Um, you know, the the I wouldn't. I mean, if there is a like a cent a central run through. I'm not quite sure I picked up on it. I guess there's some like I guess in a way there's there's it's it's a bit of a parody on like consumerism, I guess. Like you could maybe make that argument, but but they don't feel like they're all that interconnected. Um there there's clearly I mean Mustard clearly is inspired by EC comics and Med Magazine. I mean there's one there's one set of panels which are very much drawn directly to look like Don Martin, Vince's favorite uh, Mad Mad Magazine artist. Um, but but no, like there's there's a, a a series of like a a wizard who you know is dressed like a classic wizard. He's got the wizard hat and like the robe, and he's an alcoholic and self deprecating. And then there's um there's a like a, a an old school eighty style talk show that's a bunch of mutants doing crazy like uh, body horror stuff. There's like a story about incel archaeologists and astronauts. There's uh, an ongoing story where it's it's basically Tintin and it's drawn in that it's, not, it's drawn in that Hergé style, but it's a uh, it's like a uh, it's Tintin with face tats and and piercings, getting in all kinds of crazy uh, uh, like punk rock style shenanigans. It's just just you know it's a glimpse into this dude's mind, which is just so varied and um, it, it's so impressive. And I'm just looking at it thinking, God damn, like how is one person able to render all these different ways? And I know you're probably thinking that's what a good artist should be able to do that. And I get that. And I'm sure a lot of the artists that we celebrate could also do this, but probably because of the, the rigors of the challenges of being an ongoing commercial artist, like as we've talked about a lot, like ultimately most of the artists that we adore in mainstream comics, they, they find a style and then they just stick with that for their whole career. Right. Because that's commercially probably smart. Cause that's what people, people come back to see them draw that way. So to see someone like Mustery say, like, no, nah, I'm going to give you a hundred different styles in my book, and they're all by me, and they all tell stories that I want to tell, like, it's just incredible. I mean, it really is truly incredible. And um, I just, you know, again, I mean, I, I feel like th- um, this is the kind of thing that, like, to me, continues to make Fanographics special, because um, I- I'm sure a lot of people that were in the zines and indie comics, you know, if you went to MoCA, you probably picked up an issue of Future or two, but... But, you know, for someone like myself who really doesn't buy single issues anymore or go to those kinds of cons, like this is just such a I feel so like fortunate that I have this collection now because every page of it was an tr- absolute delight. And I wouldn't have ever read it in its original form. You know, just it would have completely passed me by. So uh, hat tip to Fanographics, hat tip to Mr. Mustery. And uh, it's it's I don't know how I'm going to pick my favorite anthology of the year because there's been like five or six already that I think were just world class, including this one. A lot of real good ones this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it's yeah. been a banner year for anthology. I th- I can I can understand his approach though, because it's a really good way to avoid creative fatigue. Yeah, like, sure. I, you gotta wonder if like Simonson was at one point was just like, oh Christ, I gotta draw another issue. But, but when you're switching, well, I remember. Up, yeah, no, I, I've told this story before. I was listening to an interview. I think it was actually Suntress, if I'm giving credit where credit's due, but it was uh, it was Jim Lee. And this is a long time ago now. I mean, probably a decade. And I remember being sad because he talked about how he got to a point in his career where he felt he couldn't change his style because people expected a Jim Lee comic to look a certain way when they opened up the book. And he felt a duty to provide that to people. And I was like, gobsmacked by that. And I don't think he's, I think his articulation of that is actually probably the consensus view, right? Like I think most mainstream comic artists probably take that view. Like they get to a style and they stick with it. But I was like, man, like I want to live in a world where Jim Lee decided to continue just drawing in different ways. And what would that have looked like? You know what I mean? Like what would, what would seeing Jim Lee do something like this where he just goes 
and draws a completely different style that we've never seen before. I mean, I would love that. And I think it would be creatively fulfilling for these guys and, and women, you know? So, so credit to people like Mustry who just do it, you know? Yeah. Yep. 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 It, it, to, to just vacillate from lines so thick and dark that they look like they're carved into the paper to uh, wispy thin lines where the watercolor it is doing a lot of the work like that is amazing and that's just the least of it like you said he's yeah, and he all does the, over and with the coloring map. too i mean there, yeah. there's there's pastels there's watercolors yeah. there's like super bright like art deco colors there's neon there's there's like you said super dark charcoaly heavy black lines that are almost almost indecipherable in points like just like just him like raw like on the page it's just it's i mean the dude just goes put, puts on a clinic Right. It's a visual clinic. To go through the book, it's like you you would think, if you didn't know it was by one man, you would think, this looks like a Fort Thunder anthology. This looks like yes. all of the guys from Fort Thunder mm -hmm. who had wildly different styles under one cover, but it's not. It's one man. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Yep. Yeah. Wow, you brought some good stuff this week. Whatever you ate this week, eat it again for next week. <laughs> Dude, that's the beauty of comics. Some weeks, some weeks you hit it hard. Some weeks are like, oh, okay, yeah, right. It just is what it is. Every time you open up a book, you hope it's curl your toes, but it isn't always. What I'm going to do, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. There is um, a very often I'll start a book and I'll be like, it's not doing it. It's really not. I put it back on the shelf or in a box and I'll go to something else. But the time spent on that book, I think is valuable to bring to the show at least because it shows that there was something within me or within the book or both that caused me to abort the mission. What was it? Right. I want to get closer to that where time uh, reading something is maybe you want to call it wasted or, or, or squandered, or at least you took a chance on this book, but it didn't really work out. Like I, I want to bring some of that to the show too. I mean, how interesting is that going to be to listen to? I don't know, but it, you know, mm -hmm. maybe if you just spend like five minutes on it, like I just, just uncovering reading habits. Cause I read far more than I actually bring to the table. Like I, if, if yeah. something doesn't click, I don't put it on the list for you guys to see. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing that's very different for me, I know from all of our years together, from that's different that I I'm different than you two, uh, is that I generally don't not finish something. Like if I'm if I start something in comics, I'm generally going to read the whole thing, like it or not. You know, oh, I'll, but, but I'll which, stop something eighty pages in. I I, I know. stopped X Factor number one last week. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. You guys are very you're much. I think that's the better approach because, like you said, you're wasting your like. I mean, to your point, Dap, I mean, I was like 10 pages in X Factor and thought, nah, this ain't it. But I, I finished it, you know. Now, to be fair, I'm not going to, it's not like I'm going to continue reading the book. You know, I'm not going to pick up the trade, you know. So it's it's not quite to that. But but honestly, if I get something in a form factor like a trade or a graphic novel collection, I mean, I'm going to read the whole thing. It's you know, amazing how the... something. If, if it's something we're we're all going to discuss, like, like, like sure. yeah, or something sure. planned. Mm -hmm. And if I'll, if I'm not feeling it, I'm mm -hmm. still going to go through with it because I can't I can't speak on it if, if I didn't finish it. So there are there are aspects where it's like I can't I can't judge something if I didn't finish it. Like like what yeah. judging a movie on a trailer. But but something like X Factor, I'm like I'm probably not coming back to this team, so I'm good. But yeah, no, it, it, I would like to at least finish it so I can at least explain when we're doing the show what it is I liked or disliked about it. I've jumped ship on something you guys um, said to read. I, there, there's been a couple times where I, I didn't finish it, but yeah, I told, I but I told you that you don't care about it. Something yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah. that's it. Right. I, still, mm -hmm. I, do, I just don't care. But what I, uh, it's amazing how the X books have swung from the must read oh, yeah. to now it's like yeah, you can totally Holy ignore them. Well, as you're saying what you were saying, I'm thinking yeah, the X books. Like I, I, I've tried every one of them at this point. I think we have no more coming out. Right, like we've gotten them all, and. I, I don't honestly think any of them are worth continuing. I don't. I don't think we got. A, there's a storm ongoing coming up. Oh well, we haven't gotten that yet. But right. But Phoenix, NYX, X Factor, X Men, Uncanny X Men, the new Deadpool, this Wolverine book, which I know is out of continuity, but it's still you know part of the new launch. Um, none of them, 
None of them made me want to come back for the next issue. I'll go back to Uncanny to see what Stegman's doing. Well, I read this no, but I, again, not to not oh, to that's, her, that's not the front of our boy, but I, I read I read issue number two, and I was like, oh, I thought number two was materially less interesting than number one. So I think it's I think it still looks good, but sure, oh sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, no argument. All right, everybody. Hey, we thank you so much for being here with us this time. Um, please do us a favor. If you uh, found something within this uh, thing that was worth your time, give us a review. If you want to drop some constructive criticism on it, we'll take that too. Just leave a review because they're kind of important. Uh, and we Five appreciate. stars and then you can be constructive. Nah, we really appreciate it. Um, remember, if you want to save, who doesn't, go to CheapGraphicNovels.com where you will save a whole bunch of money on the stuff that you love. OGNs, trade paperbacks, manga, omnibus editions, all that stuff. Get a big old box from CheapGraphicNovels.com. You will be glad you did. And the Patreon, Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. $5 bonus episode, $10 bonus episode, maybe two bonus episodes. Uh, but the behind-the-scenes stuff, as well as the Book of the Month. And the Slack, the dedicated Slack channel, where we all meet each and every day to talk about everything under the sun. Rants, raves, praises, uh, humor, memes, movie talk, TV talk, book talk, comic talk, of course, toy talk, like all that stuff within the the chambers of the dedicated Slack channel. So uh, check that out. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash 11 o'clock comics. In your travels, with the exception, I'm looking at my list here, with the exception of Red Coat number five, I'm current on all of the uh, Ghost Machine books. And Red Coat number five is out? It, it came is out, it out today. out this week? Today. Oh, okay. All right. So, yes, yeah, so I haven't yeah. read that one yet either. It's, but I, uh, I, they, they are my single favorite floppies coming out now all of them i thought rook, wow. rook number four was incredible fabak is I just like just stop the, it, the, the man is just a, 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 a an asset to humanity the his his line work is just absolutely incredible and the story's great too i don't, I don't want to yeah. slight john's um geiger was great i knew nothing was going to happen to barney because uh, John's came real close. Yeah, real he came close he came, he to me like say, "Oh, for I, you." <laughs> yeah. I think I think yeah. there would there would be pitchforks and torches if anything significant happened to Barney. I mean, uh, this yeah, was significant, yeah. but he didn't die, which was yay. Um, right. Yeah, and uh, I I I'm gobsmacked that Red Coat is my favorite book out of all three oh, of them. It's, yeah, <laughs> I don't I don't understand it. Uh, but we get to see the identity of the uh, Grand Architect, and it's ap it's absolutely <laughs> perfect. It's it's so perfect. It really is. Yeah. Uh, I the 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 mouth. links to Freemasonry in this series are are crazy. It's either going to get John's killed or canonized. I don't I don't know which, but you don't want to piss off the Freemasons. Not a group you want to dick with. But I just think it's wonderful. So uh, if you haven't read any of the Ghost Machine books, take a breather because I'm very sure that the first trades of all three series, Rook, Exodus, Redcoat, and Geiger will be solicited, if not next month, then probably the month after. Because I'm guessing fifth issue would be the cap for each one of them for the trade. Okay. Maybe, maybe six. But um, the new books are starting to be solicited. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. the mm -hmm. fall, and they were talking about some of them coming out for October and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, they're interesting. Uh, Hyde Street, I'm definitely locked in. Yep, um, I agree. The uh, uh, what's the the one about the family? I'm probably going to get that. The time traveling family. Oh, yeah, uh, Rockefellers. Rockefellers, but the good and evil one. I don't know about Hornsby and Halo. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I think I'm out for that one. It's just a little too cutesy for me. But we'll see. Maybe I'll try the first issue, yeah. and if it clicks, I'll keep buying it. But um, so far, Ghost Machine has not stumbled. They are my single favorite monthly group of books coming out. How about that? I, th yeah. 
I, 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 for me, I Scott Brown has that title for sure, but that makes sense. Well, um, yes and no. I mean, Transformers is great, top of the heap, but there's stuff within. They're they're still all very readable. Void Rivals is great, um, but like maybe the Larry. Hama, I can I lump the Larry Hama, um, Mooneyham Pelletier book in with that, so. They're yeah, not but all... I mean, from my vantage, I'm getting I'm getting Transformers, I'm getting Void Rivals, I'm getting uh, I'm getting two Joe mini series at a time, which are all been great. You know, now right now, Death Row. No, and they're Scarlet, they're, I mean, they're very good. Death yeah. great. Um, Scarlet's really good, but I don't get the kick from the entire line that cool. I do with the Ghost Machine. Yeah, for me, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm Ghost Machine for me is just one book. I, I Rook's the only one I'm sticking with. So. I think you need you don't you didn't read uh, Geiger. I think Geiger would be at least. I didn't like Geiger from the start. I didn't like it before it was. Yeah, I did. It didn't like the concept. Didn't like the design. I told you I don't like skull. I do. I don't like that. I, that 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 aesthetic doesn't work for me. Wow. So I don't like Ghost Rider. I don't. Get, I just don't. Doesn't yeah, get used to like hearing it. Red Coat because maybe my freaking <laughs> book of the year. I, this is <laughs> what we do you. I do you. What I mean, is it's, happening? It's, yes. I'd be surprised if Red Coat isn't. Your 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 book. It's just year. really good. I think I'm, it's was... so str- I'm not a history buff. I don't care about history. Why am I enjoying this book? I don't get it. It's witty. It's, it's maybe because you don't I, care I, about I, history. I don't. Maybe I don't know. No, I don't know. Um, Secretly, you love Hitch. I could I, be. I, I think Johns was smart with with the rollout because the second phase. Um, even when we looked at the 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 zero issue or the prologue or whatever, those. The ones that are coming out next, uh, just based on those preview pages. I, I mean, you know, Hyde Street, sure, Rockefeller's was 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 is interesting, but none of them, I think, have the impact that Rook Exodus or Geiger or, yeah. or, or even Red Coat have. So it's it, it was and, smart to to get it. It's like the first phase of the MC. It's like they he gave us. You've got fantastic artists because this is the best hitches looked in years. So I mean, you've got you, you've got artists at the top of their game with some compelling stories. So he he was smart. If if he gave us like Hornsby and Halo and not Red Coat or something, then right. I, I it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been as impactful. I feel. And I don't think the second wave are as closely linked as the first. Because all or, three, I mean the, all three the books two are, in question are the unnamed war, war or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they're all interconnected. Uh, or just the unnamed. Sorry. Yeah. Right. I mean, Rockefellers and Hornsby and Halo are written by Tomasi, so they're not written by. Right. Well, I I love Tomasi, best Superman. Yep. In recent memory, I mean, so yeah, yeah I got to yeah, give Super him that. Sons, yeah, absolutely, it's fantastic. Yeah. What else we got? So. Since I mentioned it, um, it's a uh, Steiner and Brent Oram over here. But it, it's uh, I think I read probably my um, my first ever, believe it or not, Power Rangers comic. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's because of them that I even bothered. Uh, it's written by Sam Humphreys, Power Rangers Infinity, illustrated, and and they they switched it up. Because with Crowded, it's it's uh, Rose Stein and Ted Brandt. Here, it's Brandt and Stein, which is clever. But I have a feeling this is this would be if instead of Ordway inking Burn, it would be Burn inking Ordway, where 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 the style you still see who's doing what, but it's not it's not the same as if it was just Burns pencil. So. Um, the art is is slightly the line work is slightly different, and this could also be because it's a couple of years removed from crowded, so maybe the styles changed a bit. But I think I think the person putting the lines down first is different this time. But um, it's it's a one shot. I know jack all about the Power Rangers, so I this was completely blind. I believe me when I tell you, I read this solely for the art. Um, I guess the concept was, was the whole power cycles idea. Um, and, and you have kind of a, uh, Vince's favorite concept, the multiverse where you have the, the bunch of power Rangers that have been, um, you have, you have different Rangers from 
different um, eras or dimensions or power cycles. So uh, you, you've got uh, the Red Ranger is basically a talking polar bear because the rest of his Ranger team were all hockey players from Canada, but they were anamorphic. Um, there's a Pride and Prejudice Ranger. So it, 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 everybody's from a different era, so it's a ragtag team. Um, the 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 big bad is a character named Poissandra, but it's kind of set in the real world where a young woman, Lola, is an aspiring artist and uh, cosplays as a Power Ranger of her own design at a comic convention, brings her portfolio to an editor um, to critique it, and um, and then that's when everything goes haywire and, and Poissandra arrives and, and starts plucking other Rangers and power cycles going screw. But it, it's the arts was my main concern. The story is what it is. I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know necessarily the affinity that any of the creators have with the IP. Um, but uh, Sam Humphreys has been, doing pretty good work over at DC with, with the Green Lantern or Harley Quinn. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, uh, anybody, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Arnie about it. Maybe, maybe he can fill in any blanks that I may, that, that I definitely have. But, um, I mean, this could be a Power Rangers book that Power Rangers fans are going to be like, fuck that. I ain't, I, I ain't messing with that. But like <laughs> I said, I just, I wanted, I, 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 it was, it was the art team that really kind of just, Nudge me in this direction, otherwise I wouldn't have even given this a second look. But um, the art's cute. The story is 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 amusing in spots. It's it's definitely uh, the kind of story where um, you want to see the good guys prevail, and 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 you want the the everyman character to have their happy ending. So it 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 works in that regard. But um, but yeah, as far as the one shot goes. It, it it is what it is, but yeah, I I um if hell? if you're a uh, if you're a fan of uh, Rose Nine and, and Ted Brandt, you might want to check this. If you're a fan of Ted, Sam Humphreys, you probably want to check this out. If you're a Power Rangers fan, I don't know where this falls in your. I, I don't know how this compares with TMNT and, and Power Rangers or He Man and Power. I, I don't know where, but it is what it is. It was my new travels for this week because um I didn't uh, I, I it this put me in a better mood than Torpedo 1972. Ah, nice. Power Little Rangers nice. is my yes. Amory Wars for Jason. Say again? Power Rangers is Power my, Rangers. Is my <laughs> Amory. Because I'm like, I look at the solicits and I'm like, how many freaking issues of this thing have they published? Yeah. And I I didn't think it, I thought maybe 50. But they've there's hundreds of Power Rangers issues that came out from Boom. It's insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, and there's, they never cause there's stopped. not only one series, there's like spinoffs and mini series. Yeah, and, like, and, and then they had the ones that were running like parallel. You had Mighty Morphin, and then you just had the Power Rangers. Yeah, book, it's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only in an inverse. Yeah, I mean, and then uh, what was Homeboy that that was writing Power Rangers for a long time, and then he went off and did his own version of Power Rangers. Oh, did his own uh, the Higgins, Kyle Higgins. Yeah, Kyle Higgins. Talk about a, a gang move, right? Like he basically was like. I mean, I think he, you know, that was a super popular run of Power Rangers. What did you call it? And then he, it's a gank move. He, <laughs> he basically said, "All right, why am I making all this money for whoever owns Power Rangers? I'm a bounce." Yeah, well, the Kirkman. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a do Power Rangers and call it something different. Why? And, I'm like, he, <laughs> and dude, oh, dude he's he, making a killing with that. Oh, that's yeah. well, yeah, radiant that black universe is insane. Yeah, that radiant yeah. black yeah. stuff. Yeah, good yeah. for him. Fuck him. Fuck the man. Oh no, yeah. I'm saying, but like, what it like. I mean, like it's like he literally just said, "All right, I'm gonna." I don't blame like, him. It's it is it is literally Power Rangers. He didn't even like bother to switch up the number. It's like still five. It's like can he be like, "All right, I'm gonna do six or I'm gonna do four. Like he's like, "Nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do Power Rangers and not call it that." Good Same for him. colors and shit is just much like, yeah. much respect, much respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mentioned that I had four things I loved. Um. In your travels, we normally do one thing, though. So I guess I'll save one of them for next week. Um, so with with that in mind, I will, in your travels, talk about um, 
This is a book, um, Shocker. It's a book by Magnetic, so it means Vince is not going to read it, and that probably is going to get it in his <laughs> next ship. not true. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just teasing. But um, it, it is uh, called Don't Let Go. It is um, – it, the credits are um, are Frederick Duval, Didier Casagrande, and Michel Boussy. But the – the key there is that Michel Boussy is a, a novelist. He uh, writes um, very popular uh, crime fiction novels uh, in France. And <clears throat> so he's, th- this is an adapt graphic novel adaptation of his, uh, his novel, Don't Let Go. So that that's his role here. Um, for those of you that are magnetic ophiles like me, you will recognize that creative team as the same team behind Black Water Lilies, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, uh, crime books of the last decade. Um, that was also a Boosey novel that <clears throat> Duval wrote and Casa Grain adapted. And this is the fourth uh, Casa Grain book from Magnetic because he did, uh, like I said, Duval and Casa Grain did Black Water Lilies. And then Casa Grain drew, uh, they, they published Trapped on Zarkas and Tao Bang as well. Um, but this one is uh, this is this is incredible stuff. It is um, it is. I was about to say it's a murder mystery. It's not really a murder mystery. It's a crime. It's a crime mystery. The premise is that um, a couple named uh, Marshall and Liana Bayon are um, on a uh, a resort, an island resort, with their daughter Sofa and Sophie, and they. Um, the wife gets out of the pool. And for, for those that don't know Casa Green's work, we've talked about all this stuff, but he draws incredibly beautiful people, like like jaw-droppingly beautiful people. Um, the wife is this gorgeous blonde, very much Vince's type. She gets out of the resort pool in all of her bikini glory, and she says to her husband and daughter, I'm going to go back to the room real quick. She goes back to the room. She never comes back. Uh, then investigation ensues they open up the room there's the room is is uh is a miss looks like there was a struggle there's blood there's nowhere to be found and uh and it looks like the they they quickly zero in on the husband being the primary suspect so the husband bounces with his daughter and goes on the run but they're on the run on this small island so it's hard to like really be on the run um and it unfolds from there but it's not at all what it seems at first as you might imagine and uh, and the the way the thing unravels is awesome. Like the the who done it, the the person who actually commits the crimes, and and what the crime is in question was like totally clever, and I didn't see it coming. It was like really really awesome. I mean, would make a great movie. Um, so yeah, just just great stuff. It's got a um, like for people that that are trying to zero in on, on the vibe here, it's it's very much like White Lotus. So if you if you've enjoyed the White Lotus show on Max, you'll love this book. It's the same setting, the same kind of like, again, like something's amiss, but the characters themselves are very quirky and interesting. Um, you've got like the, the, the ability for them in this graphic novel to make you love the characters and make them feel distinctive is really something. Um, the detectives involved, there's a, the lead detective is a, uh, like a hard nosed, almost like a Renee Montoya um, uh, Indian woman. And then her partner is this long haired uh, elder statesman detective that uh, I think um, pretty much is drawn to look like uh, the Lawnmower Man. Uh, what's Homeboy's name? Um, you know the actor that played the Lawnmower Man. What's uh, what's his name? Oh 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 Jeff Fahey. Yeah, Fahey. Yeah. Looks look looks like Jeff Fahey basically. Um, and he's like this 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 Lothario who's got this uh, down with the swirl uh, dap. He's his he's he's in, he's in love with a, a beautiful Nubian queen and uh and and he's he's like kind of like the comic relief but he ends up being as is often the case like the guy who really figures out what's going on with the crime and kind of puts all the pieces together um just absolutely razor sharp in its plot and its narrative uh and you know for me casa grain can do no wrong uh his line work just just has me my jaw on the floor every time i see it um Tight stuff, really tight stuff. So just an awesome crime comic with impeccably beautiful people and a, uh, you know, a conclusion that, that, that I think you won't see coming easily. So um, two big thumbs up for Don't Let Go. Nice. Excellent. Okay, people. 
Thank you for being here with us. We hope you come back next time. But remember, do yourself and the community a favor. Go to a comic book shop or an online uh, retailer and buy some comics, read them, hopefully enjoy them, talk about them online, and then come back here. And we'll probably talk about them. You could talk about them on our Slack, but just keep talking about comics because com- comics are the best. And in the That's meantime, true. say good night. Fuck to and spit on that thing. Fuck to and spit on that thing. I, I, I didn't. I didn't hear the end of the good night, so I don't know. I didn't say mm. it yet. Oh. Well, because of all the. Uh... What is it? Is okay, it staticky? It no, no, no. The 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 sound effects were cutting in so i wasn't sure if you were saying it and it hit sound effect (laughs) david (laughs) i've had to just explain to beth what this whole hawk to a thing was about she had no idea (laughs) whatever did you i did say david you did yeah yeah emotional damage (laughs) My favorite. My There's, you know what? There's an echo at the end of it. That's weird. David, yes. Yeah, yeah. we'll give it to you this week because, uh, you know, baby steps. Yeah, technical difficulty. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So there you go. Thank you, David. There you uh, go. Tell them you love them or whatever. So them. much. Yeah, for sure. Read good comics. There's a lot of them out there. That's it for that one. <laughs>